Welcome to our Kalahari adventure. When planning for this year's adventure to Sub-Saharan Africa, the idea of visiting the Kalahari Desert arose. We weren't sure whether we should go. We were a little bit hesitant, but the opportunity to meet and learn from the Bushmen was a draw we just really could not ignore. It wasn't easy to get there. Uh, we had to take a small plane. We landed on a grass, sandy and rocky runway um, and really made the journey real and a, and a challenge for us. Fairly interesting. We expected a, a gray and brown and sandy environment, but as you can see from the air, the rainy season gave rise to the color green. So our expectations were already blown before we even got off the plane. What an experience. This is the first in a series of videos highlighting the various aspects of the Bushmen's nomadic life. So please subscribe and share with others the stories of these most interesting people. Well, before we get started, I'd like to share with you some of the important facts about the Bushmen culture. Obviously, these um, men and women are hunter-gatherers. They live in, um, in Southern Africa, in Botswana, Namibia, Angola, Zambia, Zimbabwe, and South Africa. It's one of the oldest cultures in the world, dating back some 20,000 years. But in 2012, some tools were found dating back to 42,000 BC. It's governed by, um, the Bushman culture is governed by age rule, which means that the oldest of the family um, decides what to call the youngest. There are only 35 names per gender, and the, the, uh, the child is normally named after the grandparents. The women take ownership over the water holes and the foraging areas, which is as it should be. An interesting fact, in the dry season, um, the Bushmen use sip, sip holes for water. They dig a deep hole, and they insert a long hollow grass stem into the hole and suck up the water and then put the water into an egg, usually an ostrich egg, which they then bury and then they keep those in various places underneath um, shrubs and during the, the dry season they're able to pull these out when needed for, for water. Um, later in subsequent videos um, we'll have the Bushmen explain how they um, dig um, not only for um, water, but for some plants um, that provide moisture and liquid for, for drinking. They speak with a click, so when you listen to the videos, um, listen for the way they, they speak. We've tried to mimic these sounds, but it's been impossible for us to learn. They live in rock shelters or sometimes um, uh, rudimentary um, huts made of twigs, grass, and animal skins, which is appropriate since they're nomadic and they go from spot to spot, wouldn't want anything permanent. They're usually small in stature and have large bottoms, which are called Bushman bums. Please listen carefully to the speech pattern of our Bushman teacher, Tiche, and with the help of our guide named Knowledge, um, you'll get some of the direct information about how these people lived um, in the past and how some of them continue to live currently. Uh -huh. So then uh, this is how they were looking, you know, in the, in the olden days without clothes, without uh, living town like other people, just to live with uh, the way animals came. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. And then, Okay. So then he's saying that you know they're gonna share the idea with us. 
So that's you know, we're cutting a piece, give you each of you, mm -hmm. and then a piece for me, and then a piece for them. Yeah. So then we'll be sharing this history together. Yeah, 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 He's saying that you know these are the the uh, the, the pouch you know, which is with uh, we call it a backpack, you know, just like a backpack, mm -hmm. which they normally carry into the bush. You know, when they most of the time when they hunt, they carry this uh, animal skin. It's an animal skin. Yes. It's a uh, skin box. Mm -hmm. And then the bush diker, they use two animals, uh, very small antelopes. You will see them. The others will mm -hmm. see them. So then they, they said that they will just start with the a bush here. Which you know they were showing us their tools, you know how to make their tools, which tree they use for making the arrows and the walking stick, the bow and the spears. So they'll be just uh, showing us and you know, demonstrate that uh, onto that bush there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So then these guys, most of the time when they in the bush, uh -huh. they wear. Like yeah. this. Uh -huh. This is the horns of the steering book. Mm. Yeah, okay. steering mm -hmm. so As you can see, the color of the bushman, mm -hmm. it's more lighter color. Yeah. They are mm -hmm. uh, blind with the environment, Tools. you know. They look like the, the, the sand. Mm. Yeah. Tools. When Tools. they stand, it's difficult for the animals to understand them. <laughs> also, this one, it makes themselves like an animal. They look like an animal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When they hunt. <laughs> These are some of the grass shelters used by the nomadic Bushmen as they go from one location to another. We're going to end this first video with an interview with a female Bushman. Um, hopefully you have enjoyed this series and enjoy our interview. Um, and we'll see you in the next video when we'll go further into the Bushman lifestyle, listening to the actual words of the Bushman through our interpreter and guide knowledge. So see you next time. Again, please subscribe and share with other people who may enjoy learning about this very interesting culture. See you next time. Thank you. Hi there, we're in the Kalahari Desert at the Deception Valley Lodge. And this lovely lady next to me is Georgina and she is the manager here at the lodge. And we had a little discussion with her um, at, when we came in yesterday, and she mentioned she is one of the sand people. So I have a few questions about sand people. Yes. Uh, we know there are many sand people. Do you have any particular uh, group that you're part of? Yes, I'm part of the Bukakwe, which is the river Bushmen. Okay. Yeah, okay. originating at the north of the Okavango Delta of Botswana. Okay. Yes. And you said that um, up until you were five years old, you lived the nomadic life. How was that? Uh, it started with, when I was five years old. When my dad passed away, my grandmother took me with her. So we stayed in, in the Okavango Delta, is one of the villages. The first village that we stayed at, we called it Sepani, because there was a lot of Mopani trees there. It was named after that. I was staying with my grandma and my grandfather, who is now the the chief or yeah, the headman of a small village in the Delta called the Kakaba village. Yeah, so we lived a nomadic life. We went from one place to another up until we settled in the Kakaba settlement. Cool. Yes. And how old were you when you started school? I was nine years old when I started school. And has your family always lived in this area, in the, in the Delta or the Kalahari area? Yes, even now, part of my family is still in the Delta, which is Kakaba village. The village is right by the edge of Chips Island in the Moreni Game Reserve. Yeah. Um, we know from doing a little research mm -hmm. that each gender is given 35 different names. Do you have your name that you were given? Unfortunately, I don't know how it happened. I only have one name. And that's Georgina? That's Georgina. Okay. <laughs> and my father gave it to me uh, after a song. There's a song that he liked 
which is Mukazi Wango Zojina Uyane Zogiram. It's a Zimbabwean song. That's where he got the name from, and he gave it to me. Cool. And yeah. yeah. What is the role of the female in, in your group? In my group, yeah, house chores. We do chores, we cook while the, the gents or the men go out to hunt and then we cook for them after the hard work. They've been out there in the bush the whole day hunting and then we cook, we wash the dishes, we gather some fruits, wild fruits. That was our main role as ladies. Did the women ever get to, to go out and hunt? Nope, unfortunately. Oh, okay, <laughs> all right. And are there any rituals or anything spiritual you can tell us about? Uh, I guess you call it a religion. A re Would it be? Uh, we are Christians. You're Christians? Yeah, we are okay. Christians. We believe in life after death. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to tell us about either your job here at the at the lodge? Something that's uh, that gives you a lot of pleasure and a lot of joy. It's uh, traveling while I'm I'm here at Deception Valley Lodge, meeting different people from all over the world, telling you, explaining to you about their different cultures and their countries. I it to brings me. Yeah, it's yeah. very very interesting. Yeah. And then I was talking to the other two guests that yes. left this morning that, yes. yeah, sometimes you get fed from people around the world about their culture and about their countries. And then you're like, oh my God, which country should I visit first? It's <laughs> a, all interesting. <laughs> yeah. There's so, always something interesting. Yeah. Um, my sister wanted to know something more about the nomadic life. Yeah. What? What all do you remember about the first five years of life? How difficult it was? Or did you um, have to live off the land? Um, or how, how did you, what do you remember about the first five years? Uh, it wasn't, for me, it wasn't that difficult because we just stayed at home as a kid. As kids, we stayed at home while um, the elders did most of the things for us. And the only thing that I can remember that seemed a bit hard was when was the time to get vaccinated uh, or immunized. So we had to travel a long distance from where we stayed to where the mobile clinics would be. Mm. So we had to walk through the bushes with lots of animals all around. And as kids, you know, you'll be scared of some animals like elephants. They seem so big and huge. When you saw one, you want to run away, even though that is not the case. <laughs> but I heard you ran to the elephant. Your Absolutely. grandmother had to uh, rein you in because you were you were chasing Absolutely. an elephant. Absolutely, because yeah, because I had to run. I saw one elephant while I was traveling with my grandmother to get uh, immunized for I don't know which was missiles or anything. I, I can't remember what was it. Yeah. And then I saw an elephant. I told my oh. Oh, there's an elephant so I had to run I ran my grandmother grabbed me don't <laughs> run just stay by my side but I had to I just said no granny that's an elephant <laughs> that yeah. is so cool that well, was exciting I have to say we have enjoyed our time here and we hope to come back soon so thank you again for everything you do and you have a wonderful staff that just continues to take such good care of us thank you it was lovely having you here it thank is you. amazing thank you so much for visiting us we hope to see you again in future wonderful thank, thank you. you you're welcome thank you